What's going on, Trader? Sean Kozak tuning in again with NSTA. And in this trade room recap, I'd like to go over the trades that we took in the trading room and the opportunities that happened. I also want to talk about the textbook plays in crude oil. Today was definitely a crude oil day. Uh, it was the primary focus for what we were doing. The S&P gave some great trades, and we literally just stayed away from gold. Gold was not on our roster today uh, just due to being an unhealthy market and from all perspectives. So first things first, if you're new to Neural Street Trade, Academy and you've never been to our channel, perfect, you're in the right place. What I need you to do is click subscribe and don't forget to turn the notification bell on. The reason for that is we put out awesome content like this on a regular basis and it's our job to make sure that we teach you how to become a great trader. So like the video, give us a thumbs up, that shows us that we're engaging with you and it'll also help the new guys come along and make sure they're in the right place. Second of all, if you're completely new to commodity futures trading, there's a link below these videos that are going to give you a futures 101 primer course. It's going to teach you the foundational elements on getting started as a futures day trader. More so, if you're somebody that's got a little bit of experience and you're looking to be part of a really, really good trading community that's winning and we're actually doing things right, um, you know, all we ask you come check us out. You can join our trade room on a pass. All you got to do is get social with us, leave a comment, ask a question, or send us an email, and we'll make sure that we give you links to join us and you can come watch us trade live. Let's jump one of the charts and show you some of those trades. All right, traders, welcome back. So we're going to jump into the charts. The primary markets I want to focus on, essentially, this, this day is on crude oil, uh, just mainly because it was the most active market uh, coming in after the news reports. What I did in the classroom today is I said, listen, uh, we've got news all the way from 8.30 to 10. So I personally wasn't going to be engaging in the markets till after 10 o'clock. I missed the fill on the reversal trade. This is just my own, you know, me just saying I was waiting for a fill on the reversal trade. I didn't take it. A bunch of traders took the crude trade long on the counter directional reversal trade. But then what ended up happening is really, really, really textbook trend trading environments kicked in. And we're going to talk about that here in just a moment. So first things first, what I want to do is I want to talk about the auction. Okay. The auction is up. This market was very bullish, very strong. The profiles were shooting to the moon. There was no reason for us to want to be short selling this market. On the other side of it, you can also see here, let's go in here and take a look at the crude oil market. The crude oil market's been in a very, let's go in here. There we go. The crude oil market's in a very bullish rally. And so what we ended up doing is we were coming into the market and we were coming into this rally right here. This was an impulse wave. And so what ended up happening, as I said, traders, if we can get the correction, right, we take an impulse trading in here and then we take the correction trades in here and then we take the next impulse trades here. Why? Because when you're in impulse one, corrective two, impulse three, corrective four, impulse five, we want to be trading trends in long markets in these waves, we want to be trading the reversals, okay? We want to be trading the reversals here, 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 here. We want to be trading the pullbacks here. Big time trading opportunities in these environments. Now, this is really just me going over wave structure analysis quickly. But what I want to do is I want to talk to you about how powerful it is. When you align these two these two higher time frame components when you align profile with waves it really makes trading on the smaller time frame super effective okay and so what we're going to do is i want to talk to you about the trades that i've seen that were really valid let's measure the retracements because we weren't looking at trading trends even though there was a trend trade off the open i said to the traders i'll show you this okay really quickly i told the traders this morning i said i don't care if you have to sit on the sidelines and watch an amazing trade happen, this is going into news. I don't care if you're going into the news or the open. We don't trade going into the open. We do not trade going to the news. So yes, there was some really, really good trend trades, but it was, it was going against the rules of a good trader. So what we said to the traders, I said, listen, don't worry. We're going to get more trade opportunities. And that's exactly what ended up happening. We went into a corrective wave. And when we're in corrective waves, what we do is we measure the extensions. And then what we do is we line up volume. So these yellow, these not yellow, so these little blue boxes, these are volume nodes on the higher time frame charts. We want to know where the low volume liquidity pockets are in the market. Why? Because when institutions get to low volume areas, they can't facilitate big trade. When you can't facilitate big trade, traders they can't move money through it. So they're either going to reject right away or they're going to pass through. So what we said was when we when these line up, 
Okay, when these line up with key areas, this is where you're going to expect big follow through. Okay, so just a couple things here I want to point out. When the market retraced back down, this was the trade I missed the fill on. I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt because I was getting a bit too risk adverse. I had my order down here five ticks below this low. It came down here and it got filled in the volume node. I was looking at the confluence here. A bunch of traders took this for a fantastic long. It was a counter directional trade. Okay, I'm going to show you down here. This was the this was the entry for the traders that took it at the edge of the volume node. I had my entry down here, so I can't claim the fame of something I didn't take. However, it was a textbook trade. It was a clean reversal trade. It just all depended on where you had your entry. Okay, so that being said, the next location, I told the traders that I'm not interested. I'm not interested in playing this reversal here. I said, guys, not interested in playing this reversal. It's too far away from the 50. It's a volume rejection, so it's not technically a retracement trade it's a volume rejection trade which is a completely different way of trading which is totally fine but the point of the matter is we want to look for lining up volume on the retracement levels we don't want to be just taking retracement levels without volume and we don't want to be taking volume without other levels of confluence okay so you're going to see something here they came up and they pushed down for a second test now here's something that's super super important we're about to do um what, what ends up happening here is we're about to go from a correction. This is a corrective wave. If they take out the trend and pull back, I told the traders right at the close of the trading room, I said, you guys, get ready to catch a really big impulsive move to the upside. You should get at least two pullbacks for great trades in this wave because this is an impulse wave. And normally in trend environments, when you go from a correction to an impulse wave, that's what happens. So this is exactly what took place. There was the pullback right here. Boom. And we talked about this in the trade room. This was the entry. This was a clean trade. Very clean trade. It shot up, hit targets instantly. You're going to see targets hit fast in trend trading environments because you're in an impulsive market. Then what ended up happening is they ripped it back up. Big trade. And then they came back down. This was trade number two. Let's bring this back up. Trade number two, this was a super, super clean r rally here as well. They pushed up and then they shot through. These were the two trend trades that I was telling traders you should be waiting for leaving the trade room today because this was the first reversal right here. This one did not get down to my focus point. I was looking at getting long in these areas here. But here's the cool thing, okay? And I'm really excited because we're doing a webinar this Thursday. And we're about to release what we've done is Fibonacci ratio scanners. And so what is a Fibonacci ratio scanner? Well, what we've done is we've automated, we've automated scanning for Fibonacci ratios. And this is basically a technical analysis concept that looks at um, using Fibonacci math ratios. And this trade lined up strategically on the corrective wave. So this was a really, really big opportunity for all of the ratio traders. If you're looking at using the new ratio software that's coming out this week, you're going to find that this was textbook textbook down for the entry it blew through massive targets on the rally whereas depending on if you were trying to trade the trend okay the trend traders were loading up right here and then there was another pullback here where the reversal traders could have easily taken this ratio trade and it would have it would have yielded you really really big trading profits right like there these were the two trend trades that we were talking about in our class this was the first reversal trade that happened off of our levels. I was waiting to get long down here and here, but they never got there. And this frequency software is going to be released this Thursday. I really encourage you to come take a look at it because it's uh, it's state of the art. It's automatic. We run it through scanners. We run it through our charts, depending on what you're looking at. It's a completely uh, it's a complete standalone system. I personally think that scanning for Fibonacci ratios in the context of our directional bias is stellar. Uh, if you look at the short trades in a down bias, the long trades in an up bias, you'll have less trades, but you'll have really, really, really big trades. Okay. Now let's take a look at the S&P real quick. Okay, the S&P. The S&P was also in an up bias. Okay, and we shot up in the up auction. Let's take a look at the, uh, the S&P auction here on the S&P. We are still in wave one, and we're trying to go into corrective wave two. This is interesting. The whole morning, we were trying to determine if the S&P was going to give us the correction. It didn't. It kept us in the impulse, and I had a hard time trying to trade the trend up here. I really didn't feel comfortable trying to trade that trend at the end of that impulsive leg. I missed out on a really big long uh, because of that discipline, but I also made sure that I didn't force any trades in the wrong context. So if we go over here to the S&P, okay, the S&P came in here. This was the long trade that I was talking about. They kicked in here 
I didn't take this trade. Some traders did. It was a really, really big long trade. I never got the reversals down here at the retracements because they never went into a corrective wave. They stayed in the impulse. So this technically was an impulse. This was kind of like an ABC inside the impulse. It never left the impulse. So it didn't go into a corrective wave. I was waiting for the corrective wave for us to hit the reversals. It broke back up. It stayed above the point of control up here in a pullback. And then this ripped straight up. Now we're going into a corrective wave right now. So this would be where I would actually be focusing on trying to plan. Let's go in here and uh, let's clear the globals off here so you can see this. Let's go back here and see this. Just like this. Let's clear the globals. Okay. And then let's go in here and measure the corrective waves. Let's go measure the correction here on this corrective move because this is where the reversal traders are going to have to start paying attention on the S&P. If you're watching this video, this is live analysis. This is not just recap. This is now the next trade opportunity coming as a result of the finalization of the recap. So if you're watching this right on the fly, um, where I'm seeing opportunities, I want to go in and I want to assess the volume here. I actually see opportunities coming in <laughs> near the 38. There's a big opportunity near the 38. And there's also uh, an opportunity down the 50. So I would really encourage traders to be patient on the 23. I don't think that there's low volume here. I think that there's th this, this level here is very, very high risk because we don't have any volume nodes to assess. There's no low volume pockets on the profile, which tells me that any bounces in here are just reactions on technical indicators, not volume driven analysis. What I really think that would be really great is if we can get down here to this confluence level here. Between this, I really think there's a big trade down here at the 38. And so if they can shoot it down and we can go like this, that's the next impulse. So if you're a reversal trader, I would bypass this 23. I would try to get into the 38. If we can get into the 50 as well, there's a two reversal plays in here. So you have a reversal play on the 38. You have a reversal play on the, the 50. And then I'd be waiting for the next rotation back up, which is going to be the wave, uh, wave three. Wave three. You just see, understand wave three tends to be the biggest wave for trend direction. And we just seen that kick in on the S on the crude oil market. So what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for them to do this bounce off here, bounce off here, put in a low kick into wave three. That's exactly where I would want. I'd want to trade the, the reversals in corrective wave two, which we're in right now. And I'd want to help traders get loaded up on the, uh, on the impulse. Right, guys. So I look forward to uh, trading with you guys. If you guys are interested, uh, I didn't count the two, the two trend trades here. <laughs> I didn't count the trend trades. So today I just counted the three trades that were valid during the trading room. We didn't have any losses today. It was just three valid trades. They both they all hit target. I just didn't count all the rest of them that happened after the close of the trade room. So there was a bunch of trades that took place and I just I just left them out of the stats. So I normally try to keep stats of all the trades. I've been doing that for a couple weeks now just to help traders see the ones that were calling in the room and, you know, the different days. And, and uh, you know, no, nonetheless, it's been it's been really, really stellar. And if you want to learn how to trade with us, guys, we're just an email away. I look forward to seeing you in the class. Don't forget, hit subscribe, turn the notification bell on. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And uh, looking forward to putting out more content for you guys. We love this stuff, and we can help you become a great trader. Take care, guys.